for introductions. Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Roger Anderson, the regional chair and chief executive officer from the region, died this past Saturday. As someone who served uh, with him on regional council for eight years, I'd like to speak to his character. He was, a, he was Speaker, a man who believed in things not seen, a man who believed there were better days ahead, off in the distance, a man of public service who persevered, knowing full well he would not receive all those things he was promised because he believed his efforts throughout the region of Durham would deliver a better life for those who followed. The regional chair for 20 years, Roger embodied a politics that was neither mean nor small speaker. He conducted himself quietly and diligently, and he encouraged progress not by pushing his ideas alone, but by seeking out your ideas, partnering with you to make things happen. He was full of empathy, able to walk in somebody else's shoes and see through their eyes. Roger never tried to make anyone feel small speaker, powerful as he became. He never took advantage of those who were weaker. Strength, he believed, was never more admirable than when it was applied with restraint. It made no difference. Roger treated everyone with the same unfailing courtesy. Acknowledging speaker, the innate dignity in us all. What a good man, Speaker. Sometimes I think that's the best thing to hope for after all the words and resumes are read. You just say someone was a good man. And as Roger took the last journey and as heaven's morning broke, I'd like to think in the words of Bunyan that all the trumpets sounded. Speaker, we here still move in twilight, but we have one beacon to guide us that Roger Anderson never had. We have his significant accomplishments. Speaker, let us give thanks today for a life that achieved so much for so many in the region of Durham and Ontario. God bless Roger and his family. Further member statements, the member from London, Fanshawe. Speaker, I am delighted to stand today to talk about an event I'm holding next week with my colleague from London West as we get together to acknowledge women in our community making a difference. We will be hosting a reception for the winners of the Leading Women, Leading Girls Building Communities Recognition Program, and I have the distinct honour of celebrating six women from my riding of London Fanshawe. Rosemary Nyhoff, Marcia Beaton, Janice Johnson, Dana Copeland, Betty Joseph, and Misty Craig. These women exemplify leadership, generosity, and perseverance. Each has made remarkable contributions to their community in their own way. They are positive role models in our community, showing other women and men alike what, it can, what can be done and accomplished when people bring their talents, skills, and passions together for a meaningful cause. In a world often caught up in negative news, these women demonstrate their actions that change and improvements are possible when people come together with a positive purpose. I have nominated women for these awards in the past year, and I am struck by the humble and modest attitudes of these leaders. They simply see a job that needs to be done, and they do it. They are not looking for accolades or celebration. They are looking to help others. But without their initiatives and hard work, our communities would not be the same. I am looking forward to the reception because these women deserve public recognition. The effects of their work reach far beyond what they realize sometimes. They are truly an inspiration, and it is my pleasure to honor them and recognize them for the heroes that they are. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Everyone in this House annually honours all places of worship, including Tamil, Muslim, Hindu, Jewish, and Ismaili observances, to name a few, and including ceremonies of Thai Pongal, Ramadan, Eid al Fitr, the end of Ramadan time fasting for Muslims, and Holi and Diwali, Yom Kippur, Passover, and Rosh Hashanah. Christians celebrate Easter season, the faithful observance celebrated worldwide by almost 2.2 billion Christians. Easter is preceded by Lent, which began on Ash Wednesday, February 14th this year, and lasts for a period of six weeks. I attended uh, Ash Wednesday services as I always do, and on March 30th this week marks Good Friday and commemorates the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his death at Calvary with Mother Mary at his feet. Good Friday represents the sacrifices and sacrificing in Jesus' life and selfless acts form a man free from 
sin to save sinner. They placed a crown of thorns on his head, causing further pain, and pierced his side with a lance, ensuring his death. The crucifixion was the culmination of a number of events in Holy Week, including the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday, April 1st, three days following the crucifixion and his ascension into heaven 40 days later. Holy Week, including the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, is observed by Christians and Catholics in Ontario alone in pray in 30 languages at Easter. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Leeds Grenville. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Across uh, Leeds Grenville, volunteer groups work tirelessly to make their communities better places to live and to visit. I rise to highlight some exciting news for a group of volunteers in the village of Rockport in the township of Leeds in the Thousand Islands. This month, the township closed a deal to transfer ownership of the Rockport Customs property from the federal government. The agreement followed nearly a decade of talks and came after a last-minute hurdle with the province was cleared. I want to thank the current Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry and her predecessor for working with me and the township to resolve that issue. My federal counterpart leads Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes MP Gord Brown has also been a champion of this project. However, the real credit speaker goes to the volunteers with the Rockport Development Group and the Friends of the Rockport Customs. They had the vision to revitalize this abandoned property along the St. Lawrence River in the heart of the village. Their efforts provided us with an invaluable place for people to connect with the river. I look forward to being in Rockport soon when Friends of Rockport Chair Wendy Merkley and her incredible team will launch their fundraising campaign. We're blessed in Leeds Grenville to have so many dedicated volunteers willing to take on these challenges and make their dreams a reality. We all benefit from the work of these community groups, and I extend a heartfelt thank you to them on everyone's behalf. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further members' statements? Further member statements? The member from Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday marked the fourth anniversary of uh, the Liberal government's Bill 148, uh, having received royal assent. At each stage of the legislative process, my colleagues and I cautioned the government with respect to the effects Bill 148 would have uh, throughout the province. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, our concerns have uh, shown to be true and continue to have a, a negative effect throughout uh, the province, but uh, most specifically, I wanted to just discuss some of the uh, impacts in my region of Sault Ste. Marie. In varying degrees, uh, we have three metro grocery stores in Sault Ste. Marie that are open 24 hours, not since Bill 148 took effect. Those stores are now closed, so people can't shop in the evening or morning hours any longer. It's disappointing. I used to do a lot of my grocery shopping late at night after the kids had gone to bed. Other impacts have been significant. A uh, number of uh, employment agencies within our community have reduced their staffing hours and reduced staff, uh, reduced staff specifically. Prices are going up. One specific uh, concern of a great nature is that uh, uh, recently the Executive Director of Child Care Algoma, Anna DeLuco, uh, issued a memo to all of her staff indicating that Child, Al Child Care Algoma is making $300,000 worth of cuts effective this April. They're removing 15-minute breaks to cut down on staff hours. They're freezing sick days until further notice. They're closing a number of programs, and in some cases, even reducing staff pay by a dollar per hour. This is just one of the many examples of how 148 has affected my community. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Timmins, James Bay. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We know in our communities throughout Ontario, it's always a, a challenge in terms of finding uh, home care. The current system that we have sometimes uh, it doesn't uh, allow uh, uh, the services necessary to, in order to ensure care at home. And uh, when I look at a community uh, such as Hearst uh, that has a very interesting project, it says instead of implementing a, a system that's managed in Sudbury or in Timmins, why not bring all the services together in the community of Hearst, where everyone um, can uh, be covered uh, by the hospital or other organizations such as uh, community health centers, uh, when they can then manage uh, home care 
for people in the community. They know who the people are, they know how to manage uh, the services, and they have the ability to uh, provide the services to the community that is reasonable. I think, Mr. Speaker, it's time in this uh, assembly to recognize that there are solutions that can be found locally when it comes to providing services, uh, home care and long-term care services. So we need to support those services in order to implement a system that is uh, more locally focused. Further member statements. Thank you very much. Further member statements. The member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. Today, the Liberals will introduce their final budget before June's general election. After spending weeks crisscrossing the province making promise after promise, after years of neglect and mismanagement, we are expected to forgive and forget. But we will not forget the billions of dollars that the Wynn Liberals have wasted on everything from e-health to cancelled gas plants. We will not forget that after promising a balanced budget, Ontario has a multi-billion dollar deficit. We will not forget that the Wynn Liberals have doubled Ontario's debt to over $300 billion. We will not forget that Ontario has the high, highest debt of any sub-sovereign state or province in the world. The interest on debt alone costs taxpayers $1 billion a month. And worse, the Liberals have no plan to pay down that debt. We will not forget that in the last 15 years, the Liberals haven't spent a dime on reducing Ontario's debt, which of course eats into our ability to pay for the services Ontario families need and deserve. When students visit Queen's Park, I often ask them what the top three expenditures of the government are. They are shocked to learn that servicing the debt is the third largest government expenditure. We can do better. We need to do better, and under a Doug Ford-led Conservative government, we will do better. Here, here. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank all members for their statements. It's therefore time for reports by committees. A point of order, the member from London 